One of the big dilemmas for us fragrance YouTubers is this video right here. This is top five indie, my top five indie fragrances or favorite indie fragrances in my collection right now. And it won't get a lot of views. The reason being is because it's about indie fragrances. Some people seem to be put off by them or the YouTube algorithm doesn't consider them to be friendly enough to share them out, which is a shame because indie fragrances, independent producers of fragrance, independent uh, perfumiers, etc., are some of the most exciting and rewarding fragrance adventures you could ever have. Designers are great and lovely and niche are fantastic, although sometimes a little bit expensive and somewhat formulaic, but independent, unregulated, unrestricted. These are the true artists and avant-garde creators. The money that you get as an independent fragrance creator well, there isn't really any. You either do this for the passion or you don't. So you get some very passionate, very unique creations here. I would absolutely suggest that in going forward, you check out independent fragrance creators. I feel myself that I've actually been a little bit out of the loop with the indie scene myself because I've been focusing a lot on designers because designer videos do help the channel prosper. So I would love to do a trade with you right now. I'm gonna tell you my five favorite independent fragrances, but I want you to tell me yours. Tell me fragrances that you'd recommend to me so that I can get back into this scene. In the summer, I do actually want to focus more on independent creators and you will definitely help me do so if you let me know what you've been wearing from independent fragrance creators. This is not a top five list, by the way. These are not in any order. These are just genuinely my five favorite fragrances from the indie scene right now. This is Behold Patchouli by Daniel Gallagher. It smells like a combination of L'Instant de Guerlain Eau Extreme and Musk Ravageur by Frederick Mell, but a lot stronger, a lot more potent, and a lot more based on the chocolate element. There's also a really brazen and strong orange, which reminds me of Terry's Chocolate Orange, which is great. This, of course, now is maybe not the most relevant as we're heading into spring here, but for autumn and especially winter, this is phenomenal. So well put together, such a striking scent, fabulous. I did a review, you can check it out, and actually, this did break through a little bit into the mainstream. You can find quite a few different opinions and varying thoughts on this fragrance if you just do a little search. But truly, it's one of the best independent fragrances to come out in the last couple of years. Second one here is from Prin Lomros in his Strangers line. I'm gonna have to read this one out. This is Roasted Coffee Cigarette Whiskey. Come and get your suede honey baby. Yeah, I mean, this is... Um, <laughs> If you smell this too much, then it's hard to go back to designers, truthfully. This is true perfume art. This is pushing the boundaries of what your expectations are of fragrances. This smells like a salted caramel hot chocolate with a good amount of coffee and honey. There is some whiskey, but I think it's, I don't think that it's very aggressive. I think it's actually quite an understated whiskey. It's nice, but it's not a full on boozy alcoholic scent. It's more of a whipped cream, salted caramel Christmas coffee, and it's fantastic. And I wore it quite a bit at the tail end of winter and it was really something else. You've got to have your expectations high with fragrances like this, and it's still, for me, managed to exceed them. Next is this. Wow. What a creation from Imaginary Authors. A City on Fire. Takes a lot of courage to wear this fragrance, takes a lot of courage to uh, release this as a brand. It's quite interesting because I'm sure that Josh Meyer knew that when he released this, it wasn't going to make a ton of money. This. It doesn't really have any mainstream appeal at all. So you've got to applaud the courage and the determination to release something like this. Now, just because it's not mainstream doesn't mean that it's any good. You've got to get that mindset out of your mind. This is something really special. It smells, as soon as you put it on, like you have just squirted barbecue juice all over yourself. But as it dries down, I have always found this to be musky, smoky, 
sweet and quite sexy. There is a sensual tone to this if you can get past the barbecue fire. But for some people like myself, it really is something very unique and very rewarding. And even as we enter spring and summer, I will probably, I might even have cheekily put this on my summer list because I love wearing it on warm evenings. Maybe more of a spring thing, who knows? But the latter part of 2020 summer, at nighttime, I was wearing a seat on fire and I was proud of it. Next two are a little bit more relevant to this time of year. This one is Anatolia by Prin uh, in his Prin line. Let's just make a bit of a divide here. These are the autumn winters next to spring, summer. And this is kind of like Hugo Boss bottled, but on steroids. And Hugo Boss bottled as though he went to the gym, but he also took up poetry and philosophy. Um, yeah, it's quite a complicated scent. It, and it does start with that Hugo Boss bass line, but it gets even more complicated. This could be on my spring list. I am actually attempting right now to get a full bottle of it as my sample is going to be used up probably quite soon, especially as the weather gets warmer and it's peak performance for this fragrance. But if you do like the Hugo Boss DNA, I, I did mention this actually uh, recently in a, a video where I talked about uh, five recommendations with Hugo Boss. This was a further adventure and I would definitely recommend it. But in general, Prin's work is fantastic. But this is a great independent fragrance to look out for in the spring. But finally, and I think that my ultimate recommendation, and I was right, as it has, we've had some lovely warm days here recently. Um, it dips, it's, it's, England is, is peaks and valleys. March really doesn't know what it wants. It's sort of a pseudo spring, but also still hanging to winter, it's weird. And then you get April showers, which I'm not looking forward to. But in the warmer days, I was right. This fragrance is fantastic and really, really suits it. I know that this is going to be a spring banger and who knows, it could even break the top five of my top 10 spring list. This is Fern by Slumber House. <sighs> Can you get this by Slumber House right now? It depends on what day it is. No disrespect to Josh Lobb of Slumber House. I love him to bits, really do. I think his creations are magnificent. But man, sometimes you can get his fragrances very easily, sometimes you can't. So just look out for this and, and test, please do. But this is similar, reminiscent to Mitza by Christian Dior, which is was a spicy incense fragrance, a little bit feminine, a bit like a classic Guerlain uh, fragrance actually, in the midst of this coconut butter cream and sunscreen. It's quite wild and a little bit pricey, but very, very natural and very, very high quality. Yeah, I did a review of this already, but as it has gotten warmer and I've been able to experience this in much warmer weather, this has been just something else. Slumber House in general is kind of like a mythical house within the fragrance world. It's kind of like Lord of the Rings type shit. You know, like when you wear some of those fragrances, it does feel as though uh, you are going into Mordor, which of course does help because as you can plainly see, I'm a hobbit. Um, anyway, I, um, there you go. But yeah, this one is great and I would totally recommend it to many people who want something unique, different, and dare I say, independent this spring. So these are my five favorite independent creations in the fragrance world right now. Breathtaking, different, imaginative, and there's a lot of treasure to behold. There is actually a website, it's not as active as it once was, it's literally called Indie Sense, and I would totally recommend that you go and check that out. Go to the more unusual and abstract places with fragrance. For some of you, it will be incredibly, incredibly rewarding. And again, please let me know what you've been wearing from independent creators in the fragrance industry. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like, leave a comment, you know what to do. And until I see you next time, I'm the Fragrance Press. Thanks so much, bye.